Well, good morning, everybody. It is time to get the game going here. So I appreciate everybody joining us for this session here. Today's session is on, we're gonna be talking about building your 100. And this is creating a, your key, Target to foster strong relationships. So that is the topic today. To, to, to get started, you're going to need to go to govassociation.org forward slash download. And when you get here, you're going to be able to download the documents that you will need for today's session. And this is uh, when you use this link here, even if you're not a member of GCA, you can have access to this here. But all of you, many of you are members of the association, so uh, you should have ongoing access to this link here. OK, I want to make sure that everything is set up. Yep, everything looks set proper here. Let me make sure. Yeah, all this looks good. OK. Did everybody get a chance to go here properly? Everything good on here? OK, all right, so let's go ahead and dive in. So once you are on the site, uh, on the download page, Gov Association forward slash download, what you want to do is you want to click on the download button. This is going to download the Excel sheet, which is going to look like this here. You're going to need this document. And then you're also going to need the second download, which is the relationship triangle, and you want to click on that. And it's going to download the PowerPoint, which is the diagram of all the key relationships that you need to build in the government market. So what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to look at how to create a marketing list for your company so that you can go out there and build great relationships to get gummy contracts. So if we look at this here, this diagram tells you the top title. Go ahead and you see it better, but if you want to follow with me up here for a second, you are the vendor, the contractor in the middle here, and you're going to need multiple types of relationships. You're going to need relationship with the green circles. The green circles are relationships that you need with government agencies. The orange circle gives you neighbors and commercial audience. The green circles represent government relationships you need. Orange circles represent commercial, private sector companies and partners you need to have. So let's talk about them one by one here. The you as a business owner, you're the contractor. So the first type of relationship you want to have is you want to have a relation with end user, which is this top, top corner, top uh, right triangle here, this right here. So you need to have a relation with users. The end user, this is the agency that you will actually want to work for. The end user can be DeKalb County. It could be Cook County in Illinois. It could be city of Los Angeles. The end user can be the CDC. It could be the army. It could be a specific military base like Fort Benning. It could be, uh, it could be any specific uh, agency that you're trying to engage. So that, that is the end user. That's the actual person that has the need. So the end user is the organization agency that has a problem and they have a need. They may have a need for more staffing. They may have a need for someone to do janitorial cleaning. They may have a need to 
to bring in someone to do some consulting work for them, they may need IT services, they may need uh, low watering, they may need many different things. So the end user. And you want to have a relation with them, but but the key thing I want you to remember from the end user is they're the one with the need. So they have they have a problem and they need to find a solution to that problem. So that's the that's the end user. The challenge with dealing with the end user directly is that even though they have a problem and they have a need, they have limited contracting authority. They have limited contracting authority. That means that they can only use the up to a small threshold, depending on the agency. For example, if you're dealing with the university system, such as here in Georgia, the border regions, University System of Georgia, the border regions, they may have contracting authority. The someone at the procurement there may have contracting authority up to a thousand dollars only. If it's more than a thousand dollars, they have to go through the purchasing office. They they themselves cannot buy it. They have to use the purchasing department to buy it. And sometimes the purchasing department, they have a different name for it. It's this bottom circle down here on the bottom left here. And we call that the contracting office or contracting officers. But it's the contracting office. And the contracting office has different personnel there that does the purchasing on behalf of the agency. So with the supervisor, you might be dealing with a, ma a manager, you might be dealing with a, you know, anyone that is tied to the agency as an employee or a staff with the agency. Sometimes, some of them have no purchasing authority at all. They have, um, they have zero purchasing authority. Some of them do have purchasing authority, up to 25,000. Generally for a federal agency, usually less than 25,000. If it's more than that, they have to go to the contracting office. And the contracting office will have to, they have contracting professionals there. Sometimes they're called the CO. Sometimes they're called the KO. KO CO stands other. All the it's called the KO is CO. I would call the CO stand in the middle. This is more commercial. Commanding officer. Because that CO is used so much in the military. Sometimes they don't call contracting officer CO because they're an officer. So for most military, you know, if you're dealing with military, they're going to probably use the term KO instead of CO. Now, um, the about almost 60% of purchasing comes from the DOD. Let me see. Um, from the from the DOD anyway. So, so by knowing that KO is synonymous with CO, that's going to help you to understand engaging them. Now, there's also people with the PCO, the TCO, the ACO, the CS, the CORE, the COTAR, the FPO, GSA, DLA. All these are different purchasing arms of the government. GSA is an agency. Uh, they're not, they're a pseudo government agency. How can you say they're pseudo? I thought that GSA was strictly a government agency. No. Really? It's, is the IRS a government agency? Is the Federal Reserve a government agency? GSA is like the IRS and the Federal Reserve. They are a pseudo government organization, even though it was established by the government. But they function kind of like a kind of they're, they're not a government agency. 
they act on behalf of the government and they they operate with some government regulations that permeates through the whole organization but they themselves is not a government organization technically dla um, so all these are different individuals and different agencies that you have to work with now as it re as it relates to the uh, there's a few key people you want to know. Definitely the contractor officer. The TCO, when do you want to see the TCO? The contract? At the end of the contract. Outside of that, the termination contractor uh, officer, you never want to see them at all. <laughs> if you see them in the middle of the contract, that's a bad sign. <laughs> the the person you're going to be dealing with on a consistent basis is the contract officer or, and or the core or the COTAR, the COR. And the COR and the COTAR, usually they're the same person or sometimes they just have a different title. The contracting officer representative or the contract officer technical representative, the COTAR, when you're dealing on a project that has high level technical requirements or understanding, you're gonna to need to deal with those people as you're engaging the project. So there is the, you're gonna, when you're on a project, you're gonna to have to deal with the agency itself up here. You're also going to be dealing with the contract officer, the COTAR and so forth. This is when you've been awarded a contract, you're gonna to have to deal with multiple people. So contract officer, is one relationship you need to have. The end user is another relationship. Now the third government relationship that you need to have are small business advocates. Now, who are small business advocates? This bottom right green corner here. Small business advocates are small business specialists. These are individuals or offices inside agencies their number one job is to help the government engage small business in a better way. So they're, they've been pay, they're being paid by taxpayer money for these different offices and individuals who work in these, you know, you know, as a part of the small business offices to make sure that you as a small business have contracting uh, opportunities with that specific agencies. Now we talked about the federal government have to award, or their goal is to award, what percentage to small businesses? Not 35, not 25, but 23. 23% of all federal spending, the regulation says that it should go to small businesses. Even that is lopsided because small businesses represent based on the SBA size standard, 99.7% of all US companies. So you, as a small business, you represent almost 99% of all the companies in the United States. But the goal is only 23%. You see how lopsided that is? So yeah, 23% seems like a good number, but it should be 99%, right? If small business represent 99% of, of all the companies in the US, the goal should be 99%, but unfortunately that's not the case. But 23% is better than not having any goals. Mm -hmm. Do they assign as a small business specialist or do we seek out to find them? Yes and no. So there's different types of small business specialists out there. The small business specialist often is called the sad boo. Now, why, why are they called the sad boo? Why are they sad? Small and disadvantaged people. No, because they cannot meet the small business goal. They're sad because their their number one job is to meet twenty three percent, and most of the time they don't meet twenty three percent. And and so they're appropriately named the sad boot. Now, that's you know that, that that's for fun. I have a little fun with them at their expense, but you know we work with the small business specialists to help you. And so, to, so you as a small business, you want to engage these people here or these different offices as well. So the SABU stands for the Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization Specialist. That's the person that works on behalf of the agency 
and you can pick up the phone and you can call them, you can email them and say, hey, I want to engage, uh, you know, I want to do business with the CDC. I want to do business with, you know, Homeland Security. And how do I sell to you? And, and, and now that's not the best approach, but if you're brand new, you don't have, you don't know anything, you can ask them that. You're in class, so you should never ask that question to the, to the Sabu or the Ostabu or anybody. Because when you engage them, I'll, I'll share, share with you a better method in a second. Let me finish talking about the, the Ostabu is also uh, a small business specialist office. OSDBU, we call that the Ostabu. The Office of Small Business Disadvantaged Utilization. Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization, and that's the Ostabu. And then the SBA has small business specialists also, and they're called the BOSS, the B-O-S. See here, you think you're the boss, but you get in the government, they assign you a boss, right? <coughs> but it just, you know, it stands for Business Opportunity Specialist, and bosses are only assigned to businesses that get into the 8A program. So when you're in the 8A program, they're going to assign you a BOS. And your BOS is, their, their role is to work with you so that you can be successful in the 8A program. Now, all of these different agencies and individuals that work for these you know, small business specialist offices here, do you think they're effective at what they do? What do you think? Uh, it's a trick question, huh? <laughs> Good answer, yes. Many of them do their best to be helpful, but some of them, they're government employees and they clock in and clock out and, and it's a job to them. And, and so most of them, they do their best to help small businesses but they've never owned a business before, so they don't understand your pain. They, they understand regulations, and so, so that's the key thing that they have to understand. And their job is to help you, but if they've never owned a business, they've never been in the private sector side, they don't always understand what you go through. Now, some of them are pretty good at helping small businesses, and, and because that's their job, that's their role. Their role is to help you, um, and there are, some rare situation where they're exceptionally good and they're they go out of their way to help you and they their job description says this but they go above and beyond the job description to help you as a small business and you're going to run into some of those really good small business specialists out there not quite often more so the cases you're going to run into to a lot of them where they're just like processing you like you know as part of their job so, so don't be discouraged by that. If you understand that they're there as the, part of their job is to make sure that you know they're say, okay, you know, Miss Harper, you want to do business with it with the with this agency. Uh, you need to be registered in SAM. You need to be you need to have your capability statement, and you need to be registered in a in our database here as well. So they're going to tell you the same thing over and over like that. There. What you want to do is you want to help them to help you. That's what you want to do. You want to help them to help you. So for example, what I mean by that, if you're engaging a small business specialist, you're going to reach out to them and you're going to say, hey, you know, because if let's say you're in the 8A program and you're engaging your BOS, you're going to reach out to your BOS. You say, hey, I've identified these three agencies and this one agency has, has two projects that's coming out next month. And these, this is the link to the project. And is it possible for you to engage the contracting officer to see if they can source, source this here to my company? And so you have to do the legwork. You have to set it up everything so that it is properly uh, ready to go. And all they have to do is shoot an email, say, hey, can you consider source sourcing this to my 8A company? Make it easy for them that, to help you in that way. Does that make sense? So the, so the answer is yes and no. Some of them are helpful, some of them are not helpful, and you have to help them to help you. Now, the best way to engage small business specialists, don't 
meet them somewhere and say, hey, how do I do business with the CDC? Or how, how do I do business with your agency? Because they're going to tell you the same thing. First, you got to be registered in SAM, right? Next, you got to have a capability statement. If you approach that, then they're going to think you're not ready to do business with their agency. So they're going to give you the long run around and, and you're going to lose some credibility with them. So when you engage a small business specialist, you have to be prepared. As if you're prepared to do business with the end user already, because you want to be ready to, to, when you're talking to the end user, you don't want to ask the end user, how do I do business with you also? When you're dealing with the, with the contracting officers, you don't want to ask them, how do I bid? How do I submit a bid? Now, every now and then, you may ask that in the right situation. Like if you're really confused about something, you, you, you know, ask, don't, don't just, don't try to be like a know-it-all. So you do want to be humble. You do want to ask, if you don't know something, do ask that. But you don't want to ask from a general level of how do I do business with your agency? Because they're going to think you don't know anything and you're going to waste their time and you're going to be a risky company to do business with. So you always want to be prepared in advance. So when you're dealing with these, these small business advocates, you've already researched the agency, kind of like what we're talking about now. You've already found the agency that you want to do business with. And I'm going to go in a second on sh in terms of how to find the right agencies to work with. Okay, any questions about this portion before we move on to the orange circles? All that makes sense? Okay, awesome. So, so now you also need to, just as much as you need to have a relation with the government agencies and government support teams, you also need to have a relation with these orange circles here. These orange circles represent commercial and private sector relationships and partnerships you need to have. Starting off with this top left, top right corner here, small businesses. Now you yourself, you're a small business. You're thinking like, why do I need relation with other small businesses? The first main reason is government contracts are large, much larger than what you're comfortable with. The average government contract is $180,000. So if you're used to dealing with $5,000, $500 in the average sales for your company, you start to deal with larger size contract, it may be too much. And so you, might, you will need partners and teaming support to do those work. Now, 180 is still like a really small amount. That's just the average. Generally, you're, you're gonna be dealing with a $500,000 project, a million dollar project, $2 million project, 80% of, I mean, 70% of contracting requires you teaming up with multiple companies. You just don't know everything. So for example, if you are in construction and you are a, you're an electrician, it's rare that they're just going to need electrical work, right? Because it has, to, has to do with a building. So in that building, they're gonna, you're going to need a plumber with it. You're, gonna, you're the electrician, you're going to need a plumber, you're also going to need a drywall person, you're going to need a, you know, a roofer, you're going to need a brick masonry person, you're going to need multiple people. So they're not going to just award a contract for one specialized niche. Usually they're going to say, hey, we want a solution to the problem that we have. If that's the case, you're, you're always going to need to team with other small businesses. The second reason why you want to team with other small businesses there may be a project that is set aside for veteran-owned small business or service-disabled veteran-owned small business. Now, who here in the room is a SDVOSB? Nobody in the room. Oh, one. Okay, awesome. So you're a veteran business? Awesome. So Scott, right? Yeah. So everybody, Scott is a service-disabled veteran-owned business. You want to team up with him? <laughs> if you want to do business with the VA, the, the VA loves better owned businesses. In fact, 20, about 26, 27% of their contracting dollars every year goes to better owned businesses. So you as a veteran, yeah, you can do business with the Department of Education, but you're better off doing business with the VA. And all of you who wants to do business with the VA, you're gonna need a better business to, to partner with because that's, that's who they like. Who in here is an 8A company? 
Nobody yet. Okay, usually we have one or two, but nobody yet. Who can qualify for 8A? The 8A program? That's a separate conversation. So, but the 8A is the strongest certification you can have in the federal government market. So just know that at this point, but we're gonna continue to do classes. Uh, today's class is not on what are the different certifications, uh, but we'll do that class at a different time. But the ADA is the strongest certification you can have. In the state of Georgia, which agency love to use the ADA certification? Anybody know? CDC. CDC, CDC they like the ADA certification. So if you want to do business with now the CDC, you know, they try to do business with HubZone, you know, everybody else too, women owned as well, but they they kind of tend to like the 8A certification. So if you want to do business with the CDC, you might want to team up with another 8A company. That's that's part of your strategy in terms of how to break into different agencies. So you want to be strategic with that. Get as many certifications as you qualify for. The more certifications, the better it is for you. At the federal level, at the state level, at the county level, and even in the commercial sector. And at a different training, we'll tell you, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all the different certifications. In fact, we have a certification uh, boot camp coming out, right, Pam? What, what day is that? February 16th. And it is uh, $499 for that one day boot camp. And if you really, really, really want to come to it and you are, you, you are on a tight budget and you do not have that, please see Pamela or myself. And we have a few limited tickets that we can make that available to people. So see Pamela uh, or Myra or myself and we will get you the, the most favorite member, most favorite business in the world, uh, <laughs> free pass to that event. But, but uh, you have to come to the event because we have a limited number of tickets to give out for that. So, so you want to team up with other companies to get to, uh, to, get to where you want to go. The next relationship you need to have in the commercial sector are large companies. Large companies, what's their goal? How, what percentage must they subcontract to small businesses? 35%. I kind of scroll down a little bit, but it's right up here. <laughs> so generally, large companies, when they win a government contract at the federal level, typically they are required to subcontract about 35% to small businesses. Is that important for you to know that? Yes. Very important. You can be a subcontractor to the large companies because they need to work with you. Now, as a small business, which is easier to be a prime to the federal government or to be a subcontractor to a large company? Anybody says prime? Raise your hand. So all of you agree that it's easier to be a subcontractor that is the right answer. It's usually easier to be a subcontractor. To be a subcontractor, generally, do you have to write a proposal? No, you just, they're just asking you for a bid, a price. And, and, and they might ask you for a little bit of technical, you know, in terms of what your approach, in terms of doing the work. And they might ask you for a, a list of staff. They might ask you for a list of supplies. But generally, it's a bid. And you're, they, they're just looking for pricing. So it's a lot easier to be a subcontractor. Now with the large company, who, with, who, what's the title of the person in charge of giving out subcontracting work with the, with the large company? What's that title? What's their title? Because you need to know their title, right? If you're gonna engage them, you need to know the title. The SBLO. Small Business Liaison Officer. That's exactly right, Carmichael. So you need to engage the Small Business Liaison Officer. Now, I don't know why they have such a nice fancy title, <laughs> but if you, know, I guess you know, if I'm working for a organization, a nice, nice fancy title gives you a big, bigger paycheck, right? Their other title 
that they're usually known by, they're called the diversity manager. That's their other title. Every now and then they might be known as a subcontracting manager, but all these different titles are very similar. They, they function in very much the same way. But their official title is called the SBLO. Every now and then some, some individuals that work for different large companies that's doing federal government contracting work, they might not even know that that's their title. They, they don't even know that they're the small business liaison officer. But they do, you, most of the time they know that they're the diversity manager. So if you're calling a large company uh, and you can't research to find out who the diversity managers are, then you can call the, the, you know, the uh, operator and say, hey, you know what? I, could, I couldn't find your diversity manager and uh, you know, we're small businesses. Can you connect me to the diversity manager? And generally they will connect you to that person. But, but you know, if you're good about it, the way I'm gonna teach you you should be able to find these people because anytime you call and you act like you don't know what you're doing, then sometimes, you know, you're going to look risky to them. Uh, I use that approach. Sometimes you call to ask for help strategically so that people will help you and you do that for a reason, but, but you don't want to approach it as if you just don't know anything and they're going to look at you as so novice and such a newbie that you're going to be risky to them. So large companies, uh, you're going to be a subcontractor to them and you're going to engage the SBLO. Now you can engage them a few different ways. You can be a subcontractor, you can engage them to be a teaming partner, or you can engage them to be in a joint venture with them. And uh, for today, I can only introduce you to the topic because I want to spend the rest of the time talking about um, how to build this list here, but in a different day, we're going to train you. What is the difference between being a subcontractor? What's the difference being a teeny part in a joint venture? They are, there are different level of relationships there. And then the last circle in terms of commercial partners that you need is this bottom orange circle here. And this is your government department that you have to develop for your business. Any successful government contracting company must develop a government department. And these are individuals that you have to bring into your company to fill these gaps to be successful long-term. Your government department right now, if you are a solopreneur, meaning you are the only person working for your company in terms of real staff, any solopreneurs in the room? Okay, a few, all right, good. So you as a solopreneur, you are the proposal writer. You are the CEO and you are the janitor of your company. You're the, you're the commo director as much as you are the, the HR director, right? So, so, so you wear all these hats. So starting off, you're gonna be learning to wear all these hats. You are the government department for your company. Now, a few of you, you have a few, few individuals working your company and you can delegate tasks and, and you'll see who has more skills in one area and you're gonna, you can kind of assign the roles to different people. But let's talk about these different roles here. In fact, I'm gonna pull up a different document to address this here slightly different. So. Are you gonna ask a question? Yep. Are these um, roles, these positions here, as we did on this successful team, these skills transfer for corporate as well? That's that again. Your these skills transfer for corporate, for like MBEs, DBs, for you know, Coach Delta. Yes. Writing. Yeah. Yeah. All this here applies to your uh, applies to the commercial sector as well as state and local. Uh, you you need to have these these this type of skill set, this type of team in house uh, in house as much as you're able to. Yes. I want to find the government contracting team. I 
So this is this goes into more of a specific uh, detail of your government contracting team. Now, for those of you that came late, you can download the documents that, that I'm talking about up here on this site here, govassociation.org forward slash download. So you're going to be able to download the Dream 100 as well as the relationship triangle that we've been talking about. And so use this link here to download the training for today. And if you need to log in to the Wi-Fi, it's written on the wall right there, origin uh, 2.4, and the password is ORI. 0801 2017 and just look on the wall over there you'll be able to see it all right so so the team that you want to build is this here you want to build a team and the first person you want to have is a capture manager the capture manager is the business development person sometimes you know they're the relationship manager sometimes they're called the salesperson uh, but in the commercial sector, we tend to call them the business development person. In the government, they're called the capture manager. Now, the capture manager is probably one of the key roles. The two key roles is the proposal writer down here and the capture manager. So I'm going to give you a quick example of what capture managers are going for. And anybody... Uh, I'm going to go to Glassdoor. I'm going to click on salaries. And I'm going to put in here capture manager. And I'm going to put in DC. And this is going to give me the average cost the average price so capture managers the national average is a hundred fifty nine thousand dollars now they, they can be as low as twenty hundred twenty thousand as high as a hundred ninety six thousand dollars but the average is a hundred fifty nine thousand so all of you who are solopreneurs again in the room? Raise your hand. All right, I'm giving you a raise, okay? Because you are the capture manager for your company. So give yourself a raise, start paying yourself $196,000 a year. I give you full authority to do that. <laughs> in fact, in fact you, should, you should pay me a recruiting fee because I just recruited a new, a, you a new position. A typical recruiting fee is 10%, so 20% um, <laughs> if you're Cynthia Harper. Uh, for me, you know, since we're, uh, we're a public benefit corporation, we, we take a lower amount. <laughs> but very expensive role because the skill set is so high, there are so few people who know these skills here. Very few people know how to do this here. And those that do know how to do it, they are very expensive. When you're coming in here, all the classes, all the training you're coming to, that's really what we're teaching you to become. We're teaching you to become a capture manager for your company. And if you are the owner, you're, you're learning super valuable skills, uh, these skills here. If you are an employee of a company, dedicate yourself to learn these skills here in the company that you're working for, they're going to give you a raise because you're going to be so valuable to the company that you're working for, but they have no option but to give you a raise. So if you are working for a company, uh, super, super important skill set here. Oh, let me go back to my list here. Okay, so that's a capture manager. A researcher, cost estimator, Typically anywhere in, in Atlanta, you might be able to find that for 60,000, but you know, probably 80,000. A brand manager that handles your marketing, your advertising, your image, your communication, your PR, that's 80,000. You're gonna need a project manager and a, or a contract manager. Uh, this is someone to help you fulfill the contract. Could be your operation person as well. You're gonna need a contracting specialist. This is the someone that goes into the details of it, making sure that the little details are done. 
and they support your contract. And then you're going to need a compliance officer. Your compliance officer usually is someone who's in charge of making sure that the reports are being done. They could be your quality assurance officer. They could be your controller. They could be your CPA. They could be anyone that handles the compliance side of it. And then you're going to need a proposal writer. And the proposal writer is the one that is submitting the bid, writing the projects. They work closely with the capture manager. Now, every now and then you might find someone who is a great capture manager and who's also a great proposal writer. And so if you're lucky enough as a small business and you're looking to hire someone and you can hire someone that can do two, two of the same skill set, that's really awesome. But see, typically a writer, it, people who like to write normally are not people who like to be in front of, the, of everybody. They like to be behind the scene, getting things done. So they may not always be the same person. Proposal writers, uh, just to give you an idea, a good proposal writer is going to be eighty to ninety to one hundred thousand dollars. A junior proposal writer will be at about sixty thousand dollars. A brand new proposal writer who's like, hey, you know, I just started learning. I'm, I've got about a year under my belt. They might be fifty thousand dollars. But uh, proposal writers can be expensive if you want really good proposal writers. You also need a legal team and we call it government contracts, right? The word contract tells you that there's a lot of legal leads. There's a lot of, of obligations in, the, in these different projects that you're going to be winning. So at some point, you're going to function as your own in-house legal counsel, even though you don't have a law degree. But you're going to eventually, you know, small project, you know, that's fine. But you start to get to some bigger, deeper projects, you're going to need to outsource that to someone to support you with the legal side of things. And because you're dealing with contracts every single day. When you submit your proposal, your proposal is a legal binding contract. So don't assume that you're submitting a proposal and that it's just a proposal. No, it is the contract of, that you're obligating yourself to the government. Excuse me. Yes. Where is this um, it's not on the sheet. Um, it, it it is part of this here. I kind of listed it a little bit different here. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't put that in in the download, but um, it's the same thing here. If you want to, you can take a quick picture of this uh, since I didn't have time to put it into the uh, into the download. Question: Why would we have a consulting firm? Now? Why would you have a consulting firm? What do you mean consulting? Why would you hire a consulting firm? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you as a small business owner, you own your company and you're good at construction. You're good at you know, IT. You're good at you know, you know, selling hair care products. That's what you're good at. You, you're not good at proposal writing. You're not good at relationship developing. Yeah. And, and so if you don't know plumbing, if, you're, if your house needs plumbing, do you go and become a master plumber to do plumbing in your house? If your car needs oil change, can you change your own oil? Almost. Yes. I can teach all of you here to change your own oil, right? Car oil. But why do you want to learn to do that, right? I mean, I mean there's more important things for you to learn. <laughs> so, so sometimes if you want to learn and you feel that by learning that skill set, it adds value to yourself, then yeah, you know, learn to, do a, to be a proposal writer. But if you are an entrepreneur, sometimes you stay in your lane and you get help. You may get a you may hire a proposal writer to be part of your team, or you may bring in a partner who knows how to write proposal and give them equity in your company to be part of your company. And, or you may need to hire a coach or a consultant who, are, who understands government contracting to help you with that. And, and, and so, so there's you know, different, different reasons for different things, you know, depending on your own personal skill set. All right, so let's go back to our relationship triangle. So, so this is what you need to have. So these are the relationships you need to have. So keep in mind, green circles, government, orange circles, commercial relationships that you need to have. Now, go to the download page on here. And we, we've been talking about the relationship diagram. Now click on the download here. It's going to give you the Excel sheet that I'm going to show you here. And so the Excel sheet is this here. And so this is the Excel sheet, and I use this here as a uh, as a 
good starting point for you to start using this here as your methodology of tracking and calling, engaging uh, government buyers, your team partners, agencies, and so forth. And so you can see here that at the top here, you know, uh, don't worry about the different categories yet, but look at the columns. So the organization, the person's name, their title, their phone number, their email, the date you made initial contact with them, the first email you sent to them, did you call and leave a message? Did, when did you follow up? Did you send a second email? Did you set up an appointment with them to go meet with them, to do a capability brief with them? And did you present, did you give them a presentation? And did you send them a, a thank you note and any additional comments you want to make here? So, so this is, serves as a basic starting point for you to use here as your uh, government relationship management tool. But more important than that, the purpose of this here is so that you can find the different relationships that you need. So, so what you want to do is, oh, actually, this is not the one I'm looking for. I need to change this out here. Um, because this is not the exact one, because that one was an adapted one. Uh, so the one you have that's in the download is not the best one. So dream, oh, dream 100. <clears throat> uh, go back to this here. So all this stuff is in the um, is in our marketing sheet here in the software. So for those of you that have the software, it's in you know row 627, and so this is the actual one here because the one I put in there we adapted that for GCA, and so that's not the the right version. So I'm gonna have to go update the download. So later on, when I update the download, you'll be able to get this version here. All right. So, so the first row number two here says top 20 agencies. Agency is the top green corner, right, of the triangles. And I'm going to show you how to find them in one second. This, this next one is top contracting officers and buyers that you want to engage uh, or, or the individuals that represent the buying office. And then the top 20 primes that you want to have and the top 20 teaming partners that you want to have, the top 10 small business specialists that you want to engage, and the top 10 government team and partners that you want to have. So you, you got to build your government department. You got to build all these different relationships. So these are the diff six different relationships that you need to build to help your company to grow. So how does this work? When you are at an event, let's assume you attend a, a marketing event or a networking event somewhere. Every single person you meet, they have to fall into one of these circles here, one of these relationships. If they don't fall into one of these here, don't spend a lot of time with that relationship. They have to add value to your organization. So if you're talking to somebody and they say, you know, now, if you just want to build friendship, that's fine. But if you're, if you're being strategic, there's a room of 200 people and you're networking and you're talking to people and you only have about 20, 30 minutes to do networking at most events. You don't want to spend 30 minutes talking to, to somebody that's not effective, that's not going to fill in one of these holes here. So, for example, you guys saw Scott. In this room here, you want to build a relationship with a service disabled veteran company. At the end, you want to go talk to him. Don't spend time talking to your friend that came here with you because that's not adding value to this list here. So use your time, build your relationship appropriately by, by adding to this list here. And same thing with, you know, even professionals that you're trying to work with, you need to, if you're talking to somebody and they say, hey, you know what, I am a, uh, you know, I am, you know, a small business and this is what I do. 
they could be a teaming partner as a small business in your you know top 20 teaming partners right here so that's how you want to approach strategically building relationship but now let me show you how to build these how, where to find these people here so the first thing i want to show you is how to find agencies that's a good match for you as an organization so the first website you want to go to is usaspending.gov so go to USA Spending, usaspending.gov. And because of time, I can't go into everything that you need to learn about this, sir, but you have to dig deeper. And there is a video that we have that goes into specific details of today's training as well, that goes into more details than what I can do in the short time that we have here. So you go to USA Spending and you want to click on advanced data search on the top right. So you, if you if you have your laptop, you can follow with me and do the work uh, if you want to, as same thing as I'm doing here. And when you come to the advanced search here, you want to check. Don't check 2018 because the 2018 is not a full year. What you want to do is you want to see a whole cycle of a whole fiscal year. And so you want to check 2017, the fiscal year 2017. Now, fiscal year for the federal government goes from what month to what month? September to October 1st. It ends in September. October 1st to to September 30th. So right now we are in the second quarter of the fiscal year for the government already. So once you do that, you check. Now you can come and check a specific agency, but what I want to do is I want to find which agency is ideal for you to add to your list here. And the way you do that is you want to find out who's spending money in your industry. That's the best way to find what agency you should spend time knocking on their door, right? If you're knocking on their door and they're not buying what you're selling, that may not be the best agency to spend a lot of time at. So you want to come down here, go, go down to where it says NAICS code here. Now, who knows the NAICS code? Anybody? Raise your hand if you know your NAICS Okay, Miss Marie, what's your primary NAICS code? Two, four, eight, four. Okay, so so first thing you want to do is is in two digits. So you can't go all six digits. So you want to start with the two two digits. So to do that, I'm gonna do a control F and I'm gonna put four eight four. So I'm put four eight. And then I'm gonna click on four eight. And then now the six digit will drop down down here. So it's four eight four two twenty. So specialized freight local trucking. So I'm going to click on special needs transportation, you know, specialized trade, trucking, local and long distance and so forth. Actually, you don't do long distance. So I'm going to just do specialized freight here. So I'm going to check two next code. I want to see how much they award in these two next code here. And that way I can know which agency to go after because these agencies are buying what she's selling. So $251 million was awarded on these two next co here. And they awarded over 1,400 contracts. So now it tells you which company won contracts, which agency is awarding those contracts. But to dive deeper, I want to click on the download button here. Everybody see the download button? It says download. I'm going to click on the download button. And it's going to say generate file and I want to generate a file and it's going to create an Excel sheet that I can download. And once I have the Excel sheet, I can sort it in alphabetical order. I can sort it by dollar amount. I can sort it by agency name. I can sort it by company names and so forth. It makes it a lot easier that way. Now I can sort it on this site also, but it's, it's not as clean um, if it's on Excel. All right, so now the file is done, I'm going to click on download. It's going to download an Excel sheet. And I'm going to click on the contract CSV here. All right, so now I have this mess here. And now you want to you want to make some sense out of this here, right? So the first thing is you want to highlight the first column because that is your uh, that's your I guess your menu your, your top level menu 
Then you want to go to column C, because this is the dollars obligated. So you want to highlight this column as well, because this tells you. And then I like to put the dollar amount, click on the dollar, because I want to see you know, actual dollars here, so I can see it easily. So I, column C is the dollar amount that's awarded to, to the company. And then column, and so these are the columns I can hide, right? And then, so you want to, you don't want to find the, um, the major agency because the major agency, it says Department of Defense, you know, the, the Department of Veterans Affairs. You want to go to the contracting office because that's the, that's the better, because that's the, like the, at the more micro level. For example, you can go to Department of Defense and that's every single military base in the country. Well, that's too broad. So you might want to go to a specific office or a specific agency. And that's usually column. Let's see here. Is it? All right, column J, the contracting office ID. And I is good too, because it gives you at least the high level, but J tells you specifically what agency uh, and what location. So this specifically tells you, okay, hey, you know what? This is uh, DLA Energy. This is Sioux Falls VA Medical Center. Uh, and, and it tells you specifically so that you can know specifically where to target instead of like, I'm going to do work for the Army. That's just too broad sometimes. So that column is important. So everything in between. So what I want to do is I'm going to highlight everything in between because there's too many columns. So I'm going to hit hide. So now I'm looking at column C, column J. Now the other column you want to look at is column AR. I'm going to go to AR. And AR is the vendor, the company that was awarded the contract. So I'm going to highlight this column as well. And, and then everything in between that and the very beginning. Now you could delete it, but you may need to re reference it later. So you just hide it. It's a little easier to come back and reference it later. And so now I've got the three key columns that I'm, I want to look at. So this tells me the agency and the, more specifically the contracting office. And I can resort this if I want to. I can look at how much dollar they awarded, and I want to go by the dollar amount, and I can see which company is being awarded contracts. So to go back and build my list here, I'm trying to find what agency, bless you, I'm trying to find what agencies first. So I'm going to start off by going to the agency column here. I'm going to highlight the column here, and I'm going to go to sort in alphabetical order. I'm going to go so A to Z. Now you want to make sure you hit the expand the selection. So now it tells me, you know, it alphabetizes it for me. U.S. Forest Department of Agriculture Forest Services. So now I can go in here so I can say, okay, you know what? Let me highlight Forest Services to see how many contracts they awarded. So I can kind of go here and say, okay, let me. So these are all the different contract that was awarded to four services. I can highlight that and I can look down here. They awarded $526,000 for the four services. So that's that's good, but I don't know if that's big enough. And then you want to come down and look for some additional um, agency. So if you come and you scroll down here, you see a whole bunch. Uh, AMS Con Division, four services. Oh, this is a separate uh, four services agency. So so you can see that four services has a lot, but there's different agencies. So you might decide, hey, you know, what? I see four services over and over here with different different location. So you might want to decide, hey, you know, because four services, why do they need trucking? Miss Marie, why do you, why do they need hauling and trucking for four services? Yeah, logging. Uh, they need dirt. They need to move things. Mm hmm. So so by looking at this here, you've identified your first agency. So you come back here and you go to your list and you're going to put in here USDA Forest Services. So that's your first agency that you want to target. 
Now, what you need to do is you need to go find name, title, phone, email of someone specific there. Because just having a agency name that helps, it's a good starting point, but without knowing a person there is not very effective. And so let's go back to your list here. Now, if you want to specifically uh, see which for service you can take, because all these are different for service ID, right? So you can take, this is probably Nevada, because it's NV, but I don't know for sure. So I'm gonna copy this here. I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna do a general Google search. Sometimes your know, Google is your best friend, right? And now you can go and look for a specific agency. And so region five, this is uh, for service Southern research station, but you can come here and start to dig deeper and to get a specific name and in person, you always have to dig deeper. Now, if you come in here, they're going to, I'm just gonna randomly choose someone here. And as you come in here, you're going to be able to come and so this this is the Asheville location. There's a phone number. So you get a little bit more information. But when you get here, you want to go and try to find who is, you know, the small business specialist for a US Forest Services. So another way to get to that is doing business with USDA or maybe forest services. And by using the word doing business with forest services, you're going to you're going to see different links and they're going to tell you how to do business with them. And there's lots of different link here, but you can just choose one. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, this one here for now. Because what you wanna do is you wanna dive down to a specific agency, a specific person, a specific office. Working with us, how to contract with federal services. And I'm gonna click on working with us. Careers, how to apply, hiring. Uh, and every now that you're gonna be able to find a, um, the small business specialist also. Some agencies do better than other agencies in terms of listing that. It just means that you, you have to do a little bit digging. So you can come here and learn how to do business with them. And, oh, that's jobs, I don't want jobs. But, but you just have to dig a little deeper. Now there's other ways of how to get to this here. But now we come back here, we say, okay, so that's one agency. And then you just come here and see who is Bureau of Land Management. So, you know, so that's another big agency. U.S. Embassy, you know, there's different embassies, Network Contracting Office, Network Contracting Office, they've got a whole bunch of contracts they're awarding. And so you may want to go see who they are. And so take your time, dig through it. I do have another video that goes into more details in this here, but this is how you, you, you know, at least at a high level, find the contracting office. The next on your list here is you wanna find a, a um, potential, since we have a list of companies, you wanna find the potential prime or partners, or even a small business, you wanna find a large company or a, a teaming partner, and you use the same list that we have here. So you take this list here because it tells you who, which company won contracts. 
So if you want to do it, you want to be a subcontractor, you take, you go to column AR and you resort that A to Z and you click on this here and it tells you who's being awarded contracts, which, which companies. And so these are all the companies there. Um, and, and you, so Apex won quite a few. Uh, Arizona Medical, Assisted Transportation, Bob Stout Construction Company, Care Transportation. So all these are the different companies and, and you wanna come down here and say, okay, hey, you know what, who's, who's won the most? And, and you know that by just kind of looking through the list. KGL, has they won quite a few. So I'm gonna go to KGL. I'm gonna highlight all of KGL. So I'm gonna highlight KGL and all the contracts. So, so far they won $88 million. So is this a good potential prime for you to do work with? <laughs> yeah. So that, so KGL transportation, they go into your list as, as a either a prime, we don't know if they're a large company yet or a small company, but if they're winning $88 million, probably they're a large company. So we're gonna assume that they're a prime. And so we're gonna put KGL um, as one of the companies here. And then now you need to find their contact information. So there's a few ways of how you find their contact information. On this list here, they have the DUNS number on here. So vendor DUNS number, where is that? I think I'm gonna have, um, DUNS number is column BM. So I'm gonna hide all the stuff. And now their address is in, in this list as well, but uh, I'm gonna go to the DUNS number. So now I have the DUNS number, right? So, so I'm gonna go back to KGL. Now, the way I'm doing it, it looks easy for me because I've done this many times. You're gonna have to practice this over and over and over to get comfortable with this. Seeing it one time, you're not gonna get good at it, okay? So I just wanna prep you so you don't get discouraged along the way. But you wanna take the DUNS number. Now your DUNS number is how many digits? Not six? That's the next dunce number. Excuse me? Nine digits. Nine digits. Now, I say that because on Excel, if there's a zero in front, Excel will not recognize the zero. So when you see this here, you want to count. Make sure that's nine digits. So this is, yep, this is nine digit. And, and so I'm going to copy this nine digit because I want to learn more about this company. And so, like, if you go here, you see this here, this is only eight digits. This DUNS number is only eight digits. That means the zero in front is missing. Sometimes there's two zeros in front. So anytime you see a DUNS number that's less than nine, that means Excel didn't recognize a zero and they, they threw it out like that. So once I have the DUNS number, I'm going to go to sam.gov and I want to learn more about this company. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna click on search records. And I'm gonna paste their DUNS number down here. Right here it says DUNS number. And I'm gonna hit search. Now every now and then some of these companies do not allow their business to be publicly found. Most of them do. Just you should for your company. When you're registering in your SAM profile, there's a little checkbox that says, do you want to be publicly listed? And you want to say yes. If you say no, other people can't find you and you, can't, you can potentially lose some teaming partners that way. So once you, you find the company, you're going to click on view details. Uh, generally, you'll be able, if you're using the list that we that from here, you'll you'll be able to find it on column BM. 
You just put, no, you just put two zeros in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have, you should have Dunn's number, yeah. What was your question? I'm saying nine has a double zero in front. No, no. When you're when you're searching it in in Sam, you always want to put the zeros in front. You always want to make sure that there's nine total digits when you're putting in the search. This it just throws it out in Excel. Yeah, only Excel throws it out. Yeah. So I'm on here. So if you want to do business with this company, uh, the, first of all, they're based out of Kuwait. So, hey, that's that's awesome. You get to go do international work. <laughs> and you want to click on entity registration by clicking on they they're active. Um, they are and exclusion, right? No. <laughs> exclusion means that they're debarred from doing government work. So if you see a company that says yes here, you don't want to do you don't want to work with them because they're they're in trouble with the government. So I'm gonna click on entity registration. And I'm gonna come and look at their company. And if you want to look at the website, this is their website. Oops. So this is the website here, kgl.com. They're probably a large multinational company because any company that has a three-digit domain name, <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty high-level domain name. So they're probably a multinational company. So you come here and learn about who they are, what they are, and so forth, and uh, leader in integrated supply chain management and so forth. And, So that's kind of how you learn a little bit about them. Now you also want to come down here. Uh, they initially registered to do work in 2009. And, and then you want to come down and just look through the industries that they do and see if it matches what you're, what, what, what you're trying to do as well. And so that's part of how you go through this here. Now, assuming, let's go back to our list here. If you want to find small companies, for example, jo jo Joanne Bayer, let's assume you want to find this company here. And we're going to go back to Sam. And we're going to look for that company as a small company here. So I want to go to Advanced Search. And I want to see if this company is a small or large company. Make sure it's nine digit. Yep, it is. I'm going to hit search. So this company chose not to be listed. You see that? They're in the system, but they chose not to be listed. So that is a disadvantage for them, meaning potential people can partner with them. They get the privacy that people can't, like people can't email them. You know how if you're in Sam, you start to get some marketing emails. And so they miss out on that. So they don't get bombarded with marketing, but they miss out on potential partners. So that's not a that's not a good move. But the other database that you want to use is dsbs.sba.gov. dsbs.sba.gov. And yes. So let me type it up here. So that's the that's the, the site you want to go to dsps.spa.gov. So we've talked about these different websites here. So dsps.spa.gov. So when you go to dsps.spa.gov, this is the small business portal. And on the small business portal, everybody will show up here. Mm -hmm. So once I'm here, I want to scroll down to the middle of the page where it says Dunn's number. If they're a small business, they're going to show up on this database here. And so I'm going to go down to the bottom, hit search. 
dsps.sba.gov. So they're not in here also. So apparently they, they must have been, uh, there may not be a small business. Maybe that's why they're not in there. So chances are they're probably not a small business for them to not show up in both of those databases. Sometimes my um, Bluetooth wireless mouse stops working, so I have to reactivate it. Anybody have problems with that? Your Bluetooth mouse stop works, stops working? No? Okay, that's good. Uh, let's see if I can find a... Okay, I'm going to use this company here, H H H and S. I'm going to take their dance number and I'm going to go back to DSBS, see if I can find them here. Scroll down here. Now, DSBS does not automatically clear out the dance number, so you always want to make sure you clear it out if you're doing other searches. All right, so I'm going to search to see if I can find that company here. Oh, they're in here, right? So I'm going to click on H&S. They've got a good profile here. So I'm going to click on the company name. It's going to take me into the details of it. So they've got their website. they got a professional email account. Wow, everything looks good. looks like they've gone to some of our classes. <laughs> so they are Black American. Small business, woman owned, Sonia Hines is the president. So this is kind of how you find the points of contact, right? So if you want to find a teaming partner, that's a small business. And so that's winning contracts. So now you take h &S resource and you go back to your small business. You want to go to your teaming partners, put them there, and then you can put the person's name and so forth and fill out the rest of that there because you have their phone number here, you have their website, you have their email address here. And they're in the 8A program, but guess what? They just graduated in 2016. So if you are a 8A company, this would be a good company for you to target because they've been winning contracts, but they graduate out of the 8A program and they cannot get 8A contracts anymore. So if you are 8A company, you can team up with them and use your 8A and go to the same relationship, same agency that they've been working with, and you can get some 8A contracts and you can team with them and work together with them. They do 49% of the work, you do 51% of the work. So that's a very important strategy in terms of how to utilize your 8A uh, with this company here. Have you seen traditionally where like a lot, of, a lot of companies are in the Maryland, D.C. area. Is it best to work local companies that you can really get some mentor with? Or is it okay to go after, we're seeking companies to build our list, to grab those companies in different areas? Alabama is really strong, D.C. strong. Mm -hmm. Kentucky's getting stronger. It, it depends on where you want to do business. So if you want to do business in the, inside the state of Georgia only, then you may not necessarily need to partner with this company. Every now and then you might want to partner with a company in DC because that's contract capital of the world. So, you know, because there's a lot of work out there, but more so if you have a partnership with them, they, they have great and quick and easy access to contracting officers up there because they're in their neighborhood. So, so you are, yeah, I think, you know, in general, you're always going to need a partner in DC area until you establish your own office up there. But, uh, but if you're just want to do local, you don't necessarily need to have a partnership in DC. So they have a little bit of bonding capacity, two million, and facility support is their key NAICS code. And they put different keywords down here. So, you know, so this company actually has a pretty good profile. A pretty, this is probably one of the better profiles I've seen because outside of, um, I really don't see anything else that they need to improve on. So this is actually good. They have a GSA schedule also. So this is this can be a good potential teaming partner if you have a 
8A certification and you want to team up with them. And and I don't think they're a veteran. They're not a hub zone company. If you're a hub zone, you can team up with them also because they're not a hub zone company. So, so there's different things that you can kind of engage them with. So I've shown you here how to find a teaming partner for a small business. I've shown you how to find a large prime. I've shown you how to find agencies. Uh, your, your government department, that is you just having to go and network and, and look for people. And if you need a accountant, just let, let us know here. We have accountants who understand DCA compliance. If you need a proposal writer, just let us know. We have proposal writers that we can connect you with. In terms of building your government department, that's the easiest way to build that. If you want to do something different than that, you're welcome to go and you know just search anybody else out there, and that's fine. Uh, quick resource in terms of if you if you do want to find a proposal writer uh, yourself then you want to use APMP. Um, APMP stands for the Association of Proposal Management Professionals. And they have different proposal writers there and you can engage them and so forth. Uh, that's one way. Outside of the resources we have, that's another way of how you can find proposal writers. The other way of, uh, if you want to learn how to write proposals yourself, the best resource out there outside of the trainings that we provide, because we provide training, but we know that you should learn more than just one way, because the GCA methodology is just one way. And, uh, and so you want to learn every single way you can. And so we try to give you all the different resources possible out there. Shipley's proposal. Shipley is probably the industry standard. Their website is called shipleywins.com. If you want to learn how to write proposals for your own company, this is probably my the, the number one resource I can recommend you to. And if you want to do this here, you can go to shipleywins.com and they have classes, they have they have trainings every single week somewhere around the world. Is it our partner in DC or no? No, no. Shipley is just the uh, industry. We haven't really established a partnership with them, with the association, but they're kind of the, the industry standard. And their classes, like they have a class coming up on how to be a capture manager, um, manage federal proposal, writing federal proposals. So they got a class coming up February uh, 6. And, if, and then you click on this here and it will tell you how much it costs and so forth. And, um, so this class is about $1,300. But if you want to learn how to write proposals, this is probably the industry standard. Now we teach you also, and we teach you our own methodology, our own processes and so forth. But uh, this is this is a really awesome resource here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. DSPS. Yeah, so let me go back to the beginning. So I'm on DSPS here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the very beginning. So when you're here, right, I'm going to show you a different way of, of, yeah, how to search. So you, so that has a, because you're on the tablet, it has a menu button. So you want to click, you want to go down to where it says, for Don's number, you want to go down to this section here where it says, searching for a specific profile and you can put a dunce number down here what i'm going to do this time is i'm going to go and search differently so for example some of you who, who you're not 8a certified yet and let's assume that you're building you're you're trying you found an agency you want to do work with and for example you say you want to do business with the cdc and and the cdc they tend to like 8a certifications so you want to come here, you say, okay, you know what, I want to build a relationship with someone who's an 8A so they can be my teaming partner to go after CDC contracts. So you will come here and you want to at, you start off with Georgia because it's easier to build relationship with companies in Georgia. And you want to click on Georgia. And then the next thing is you want to click where it says government certification, you want to click it 8A active certifications only. So you, I want to find 8A companies who's based in Georgia so that I can potentially team with them. And then I also want to put in my NAICS code. 
So I only want to find 8 companies that's in my industry. So who knows their name, primary name to outside of Ms. Marie? Okay. Mine is 512-110. 512-110. 110. Okay. Now, I always tell you there's two numbers you want to remember, right? Your primary NAICS code and your DUNS number. Those are the two numbers you want to memorize when you're, when you're dealing with government contracting. So keep practicing. And that's why I, I make you guys use it here so that you can start to remember these. Because part of it is when you're dealing with the contract officer, they can say, oh, what's your primary NAICS code? And you don't know, you're going to lose credibility very fast. Or they say, oh, let me look you up. What's your DUNS number? And you don't know your DUNS number? credibility down the drain. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to check 8A, I'm going to check the state of Georgia, and I'm going to put your primary uh, dunce, uh, next code, and then I'm going to hit search at the bottom. Oh, the other thing I want to do, well, that's that's good for now. I'm going to hit, uh, if you if you want to print, you want to export it, you can, you can go to the edit column here and make sure that you put in here like their address, their, their oh, that's already added their DUNS number, their email address, their, their phone number, uh, their website. Uh, where's the phone number? Phone number. So you see that I added all this here and now I wanna hit save. So I wanna hit save. So now when I search this here, it's gonna pull up DUNS number, phone number, email, website and all that stuff. And then I'm hit search. Now it's going to pull up all the 8A companies in Georgia that have your next code. How many companies are there that match your, your criteria? That's it. There's only 10 8A companies that have your next code in the state of Georgia. So these are some of the companies. So automatically, if I look at this here, this company looks kind of weak because they didn't fill out their complete profile. So, so this one didn't fill out the complete profile. But you can come here and you can look at who they are and what they are and so forth. And, but this is, this is everything you need here. You got their DUNS number, you've got their uh, email address, you've got their website, their phone number, all of it right here. And you can read up a little bit who they are, what they do. So like this company, uh, Charlie Whitfield, she's actually a friend of mine, Witty IT. She's an 8 day company, she does videos and so forth, so that can be a potential teaming partner. And uh, if you want a, a personal introduction, just let me know, shoot me an email and I can introduce you to them and you can meet with them potentially team up with them to go after contracts together. I also know the Lois Babaker. She started, um, when I first got to government contracting, she started government contracting also. And so I, I had a consulting company and she said, hey, can I come and work for your company for a little bit so I can learn government contracting? So she came and worked with us for a few months. And she said now she's ready to flap her wings and go out there and build her company. And so now she's out there, she's willing winning millions of dollars in contracts now. So let's pull up her profile here. Let me see anybody else I know on here. I've heard of Ted Cummings, but I don't, I don't know know him. Yeah. Onyx, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 that's right, Ted. <laughs> I said, I heard the name, you know, where did I know the name from? Yeah, so they're actually a member here. <laughs> Sorry, Ted. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go to um, USA Spending. I want to see how much that company, um, and I'm going to come to Advanced Data Search, and I'm going to search, see how much contracts they want. Because if they haven't won any contract, my approach is differently. Because they, they're going to need me to help them win contracts, because you guys know more than most companies out there know, because you're, you're learning. Whereas most companies, all they, all they understand is I need to get registered to win government contracts. They never take classes. They don't know how to build a relationship. They, know how to build a, they don't know how to build a targeted list like this here. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to check like the last few years. And I'm going to come where it says Dunn's number here. 
I'm going to paste her dance number here and I'm going to hit submit because I want to see how much contracts they want. Since, since I know, I, you know, I already know they won millions in contracts, but you know, I want to show it to you guys so you can see quickly. So they, they're done pretty well. So in the last, since 2015 to now, they won about $19 million. If you want to dig a little deeper, um, let me click on this here quickly. If you click on the contract ID, it, it goes into more details. I want to look at competition. Look at this here. So this is a, this project is $553,000. It was awarded to one company only in 8A what? Soul source. Soul source. Now, what is Soul Source again? It's kind of the individual kind of managed the whole Soul project. Nope. Soul Source Award. So, no, 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 no. Yes, it's a no bid contract. You, it's a direct award to one company only, and she didn't have to compete with anybody else. That's why the 8A is the strongest certification you can have out there. Now, this is true for veteran. Veteran can win sole source. Women owned can win sole source. Hub zone can win sole source. But contracting officer have to do more to award those contracts. And they have to justify a little bit deeper than the 8A, whereas the 8A is the most, the easiest way of how contracting officer can do a direct award to one competition, uh, to one company with no competition. So this is a good example. So what Delos is good at is she's very good at building relationships. So when she goes out there and she builds a relationship and with this agency here, um, she's out there building relationship with Department of Defense, with Defense Information Systems Agency, DISA, D-I-S-A. So she's building a relationship with them and they, if they trust her, they're going to do a direct award. If it's $4 million or less, they can award it to a company with no competition. And this can be potentially a good partner if you're in IT. She used to be in our old office in the same building that we used to be in, in the uh, fourth floor over there. So, all right, so we're, it's, time is up. So um, this gets you started. Now, obviously you have to go and do a lot more adding to this list here. It might take you two or three weeks to build your list here, but take the time, take your time every, every day, research a few companies, and you're not going to be able to build your total dream 100 at one time. But as you meet people, as you as you find out new agencies, you want to start to build this list here so that you're not everywhere trying to do everything. Because now you have a targeted approach to how you want to grow in the government market. You, you do it by agencies that's awarding dollars in your industry. You do it by strategic partners that you want to have. This allows to expand and not having to just chase at the contracts. Uh, so any last minute questions before we wrap up here? Okay, that's awesome. So uh, I'll be around for a few minutes afterwards. So if you have got other questions, you want to talk, uh, see me afterwards and we'll go from there. Well, thanks for joining us. And we are wrapping up today's session on Dream 100. And I will, the Excel sheet, I will go update the Excel sheet to, to have the right one because the that one wasn't correct. So. Thank you.